All right, fantastic. Thank you all for joining us here today. Uh, we're the Boston University School of Hospitality Administration, or as we like to fondly call our College Shaw. Um, and we're excited that you're considering one of our graduate programs and happy to have this opportunity um, to talk about the student experience. Um, in the next 45 minutes, we'll um, have our student panel. Uh, we'll talk about our different programs and then chat about uh, the next steps in completing uh, that application. If you have any questions uh, for myself or any of our student panelists, please feel free to put those in the Q&A Q box or the chat, um, and we'll be fielding those um, throughout our conversation. Um, so before we dive in with our conversation with Steve, Celine, and Lucas, I just want to do a quick overview of our two programs. Um, so we offer um, two graduate degrees. So first is our Master of Management and Hospitality. This is our flagship program. Uh, it's a one-year full-time program or two years for part-time students. It's uh, focused on developing your industry knowledge. Um, it's a very practical and innovative uh, curriculum with opportunities to specialize in different areas from digital marketing, innovation, restaurant management and experiences, uh, revenue management and analytics. Additionally, there's an option to extend the length of your study in the program by adding on a semester abroad in Paris, studying at the Essex School of Business. Our second program, which will be launching um, its inaugural class in, this September, is our Master of Science in Hospitality Management. This is a two-year research-focused degree. Um, its focus is helping students uh, prepare for a PhD. Uh, in the future or an analytical or R&D role um, in the industry. Uh, the main focus will be uh, completing a master's thesis under the mentorship with one of our academic um, uh, research faculty members. Additionally, because this is a research focused program, um, if you are an international student, this is a STEM OPT eligible program. So in addition, in addition to the one-year OPT um, work extension to your visa, you could earn up to additional two more years to work here in the U.S. after completing this program. All right, so without further ado, uh, let's get to the main event while you're all here uh, to chat with our current Master of Management and Hospitality students. Um, to start things off, it would be great if you could all introduce yourself. Uh, Lucas, would you like to uh, introduce yourself and to tell us a little bit about your background? Yeah, um, so hi, I'm Lucas. I'm from um, the Boca Raton, South Florida area. Um, I finished undergrad last year and um, pretty much went right here from there. Um, I feel like the university and the city really provided a one of, the, one of the only programs, if not the only program with the given concentrations in marketing, finance, and um, entrepreneurship. Uh, had a lot some work experience in hospitality startups, as well as um, my parents own a restaurant. So that really drew me to wanting to do the program and do the marketing um, concentration. Excellent. Thanks. Uh, Celine? Hi, my name is Celine. Um, I'm from the Philippines and I'm a full-time student just like Luca, Lucas. I don't have a concentration. However, I've worked um, for 10 years in the fashion manufacturing industry and I felt that the MMH program was for me as a chance to change my career path and it has helped me a lot. So I didn't do a concentration because I felt like I've already learned all these concentration in my previous uh, undergrad and MBA. And I chose specific electives that would help me further and strengthen my knowledge in hospitality to prepare me for my next uh, career goal. Thank you. And last but not least, Steve. Hi, I'm Steve Curland. I'm a part-time student. Uh, I'm a returning student from with a with a long gap. So I did a traditional bachelor's after um, high school, and then went off and worked in the restaurant industry. I'm a partner in a couple of restaurants in the Boston area, and returned looking for new networking, new opportunities uh, at BU, which I had some links to through friends, family, and previous programs. Uh, 
and I've I've had an amazing experience returning. I'm I'm in a, in sorry entrepreneurship and innovation is my core, and I want to use those and do some new and exciting things in addition to what I'm doing. Great, thank you. Um, so your graduation is is next month. Um, Selena and Lucas, you've been here about a year. Steve, you've been here about two years, I believe. Um, what has been some of your favorite parts of the program? Uh, Steve, why don't we start with you? Uh, well, I think uh, within the program, I've, I've enjoyed all my classes. Uh, if you do innovation entrepreneurship, you have an overlap with the Questrom Business School. Uh, and that was a, an interesting, exciting class with a design innovation class. Uh, I've also learned a lot. And, and one thing that was really special to me is I would, if you had asked me two years ago when I came in, if I would have anything to do with senior living, that was probably the last thing on my plate. But over the two years, we've really developed a project. Uh, we recently were won a prize in an innovation competition with it. We're moving forward with it. So um, it really shows that you can, as long as you're open to new things, you have a lot of opportunity. And how about you, Lucas? Yeah. Uh... Similar to Steve, the program really allows for a lot of collaborative opportunities with local businesses. Um, through some of the classes, you'd work with uh, national, um, national and international hospitality groups, restaurants, marketing firms to help them um, work on certain projects. Um, I'd also say I really valued the connections with professors, um, especially when you're starting looking for jobs. I'd say that at least most of the interviews that I've gotten have been through connections with the professors and the faculty um, at the school. Oh, that's great. And, and how about you, Celine? Exactly like Lucas said, I value the network that the school is able to give us and also the collaborative um, things that we could join in. For me, one of the most that I had a lot of fun and it was a learning experience for me was to be able to plan uh, the leadership summit together with my events class. So this was a, such a different thing. And it was a hands-on experience of what the industry can show. And also with that, I've learned that the hospitality industry is not only like what Steve was saying, it's not only about hotels and restaurants. It's also about the senior living. It's also about event and conventions. Just like yesterday, we went on a tour in the Boston Convention Center, and that was definitely a different experience because you wouldn't really think that something like that would also extend to the level of hospitality. All of you touched on some um, great topics. Um, I'd love to circle back something to the summit, and I know that was part of your event planning class that you're currently enrolled in. If you want to talk a little bit more about that experience. So the event planning class is an elective and I chose to do that because I felt like it was very unique in all the lists of what uh, the program can offer. And so the event planning would start at the very beginning of the semester. You have two months to prepare and you're both and a lot of the students in the class are put into breakout teams that are like subgroups that are are into different uh, departments of the actual event planning. So you, we have the AV team that does all video sounds. There's the team that does the food and also the team that does marketing and the gifts and, you know, collection of the guests. Also the innovation competition that Steve has mentioned in which his team won is actually part of the Le leadership summit. And it was also an experience for me to be part of the competition and get into the final so that was a new thing for the summit and it was very it was definitely an experience it was more a lot more planning and a lot more collaboration and you learn to work in with different people different teams and groups Steve, you want to talk about your experience with the innovation competition as well sure so uh we had developed a project uh bringing underserved teens to senior living uh, and I started that in my first semester, actually. I was given a project kind of out of the blue by uh, my innovation teacher. I worked with a group then, and then I worked with another group the next semester, uh, and it really developed into something. So I uh, 
one of the things that BU has a lot of is resources beyond the classroom. So they have a great thing called the Build Lab, which is their innovation center. Um, and I was able to work with them. They gave me a lot of uh, people to work with, including this, the MIT BU Law Clinic, which does free consultations. Um, and so we built that into a project. The Then along came the Playages competition, which is a competition that's donated by uh, somebody associated with the school. They give money and you basically go through a bunch of screening. We ended up with the top five teams and Celine and I were both in that competition on different teams. Uh, and we and we presented in front of about two or 300 people at that hospitality summit. And uh, we did well, we, we, we got some money out of it that will apply to our project. And it really made us kind of think through everything as we we're doing the project. So we want that project to go forward and we'll continue working on it. That was great. It was a great present. Both of yours were great presentations. It was an exciting event for sure. Um, and Lucas, you mentioned um, faculty resources and um, all the professional development connections you've been making this year. Do you mind elaborating about that? Yeah, um, pretty much all the professors are, you know, clear established professionals in their field and are very willing and open to help you with whatever you need. Um, I mean, I probably had, I guess, six, seven, seven or eight professors now and almost all of them got me in touch with their industry friends or told me to go through their links and find anyone who may be of a valued connection, uh, possibly. And then just the name of BU alone, regardless of professors, that has opened just as many opportunities as the professors themselves. Um, just the alumni connections that the school has provided has really been um, a great benefit. Excellent. And that's what grad school is all about, is making those connections. So as you can see, there's so many different avenues to, to get that started for you in your career. Um, we have some great questions coming in uh, for you, uh, for the panel. Uh, so why don't we take the first one from uh, Devnash. Would you suggest someone join the MMH program right after his or her undergraduate uh, degree or work um, or should they work first before applying to grad school? You know, each of you have taken a different path. Um, so it'd be great to hear about uh, your perspective on this. Yeah, um, I'll go, I guess. Um, so I did do it directly after undergrad, um, about six months after. And I would say that, I mean, there's really no right answer. <laughs> it, it really depends to each individual situation, but I'd say I'm, um, very happy that I did it right after. Um, I think it's really allowed me to interview for jobs that I probably wouldn't have been able to before and really get that experience, both from a work perspective, because you could, of course, intern while you're a grad student in Boston, but just from the coursework and, and like I said, connections, I think it was great. To, I wouldn't have done it another way um, from starting right, right after undergrad. I would just... Um... I think it can be valuable either way. You know, it's interesting for me because I bring a lot of experience to the classroom, which is valuable, but I'm learning a ton from my classmates too. Um, so, uh, you know, they, they're clearly uh, much more comfortable with some things and I'm much more comfortable with some things, but we work together really well. So I think work experience of some kind is always helpful. And on the other side of it, as a restaurant partner, I would suggest that if you're going from undergrad to grad school and you want a career in hospitality, that it is important you get some work experience in there somewhere. And that can be an internship, as Lucas was saying, it could be part-time work in one of the zillions of Boston restaurants. But as somebody who hires people into the restaurant industry, I'd say it's really valuable to have some real work experience in there. And how has part-time study been for you, Steve, with balancing all of your, you know, your multitude of full-time jobs and work <laughs> and going to school uh it's been great and the way the way i approached it is i just carved out days for school and days for work so i i am literally on campus it's kind of an ongoing joke i see lucas in there a lot but there's a grad lounge and i just sit in this one chair in the grad lounge on mondays tuesdays and thursdays pretty much from nine or ten in the morning till my classes are done and uh, it's funny, even and Dean Up Nation now calls it my chair. You know, he'll see me and say, oh, you in your chair, you know. So I, I, that, that's been my approach is to kind of keep them separated a bit. 
Um, although certainly there's crossover and I'm applying things I'm learning at BU to work and I'm applying things I learned at work to BU. But uh, I, I found it very doable as long as you're willing to put in the hours and, and do the work. Right. Yes, in classes for grad school, uh, we have afternoon and evening. So definitely we have students that do Steve's approach or folks who just take evening courses um, and are here once or twice a week. Great. All right. Uh, we have a question about housing. So um, I know, Celine, you've been in Boston a few years. Lucas, this was a move for you from Florida. Um, so Eddie's asking about um, any recommendations uh, for housing, uh, Boston neighborhoods, uh, tips and any tips you may have for folks who are new. Um, I can I can answer for a bit. <laughs> Sorry, Lucas. Um, so definitely, Boston has changed when it comes to like housing prices. Um, five years ago, it wasn't the same as what it is today uh, post the pandemic. Um, I think that you can first use the BU residence portal if you want to. Um, maybe Elizabeth can lead you to help you and check that out. Um, but also you can also check out places around campus. So around Com App, like Alston or Brookline area. However, these areas would be a little bit pricier. If you have a bigger budget for housing, that would be good. If, if you don't, then you have to actually really have roommates. And that would really depend on if you have friends here or if you're willing to get to know other people and live with them. So it's more about like a growth mindset with living with other people. There's also Fenway, but that's also a little pricier, but yeah. And then um, to add to that, I do graduate housing. Um, so it's right on campus. And from a price and convenience perspective, it's probably hard to beat. Um, you don't have to buy furniture, you don't have to pay utilities, you don't have to move out or move in really anything. And most of them are from a safety perspective. I mean, everywhere in Boston is safe, but um, all of the, almost all of the living residences have swiping uh, cards to get into the building as well as um, maintenance and really just anything um, you'd need. And I'll also add um, Boston has great public transportation as well. So we have the MBTA system. Uh, we have um, a bus and a tram system that has steps right in front of our building here on uh, Commonwealth Ave. Um, and the university also has a free shuttle system. So there's plenty of ways to get around campus in the city. Um, we have some great questions about uh, the coursework. So Eddie is wondering about um, how challenging uh, the core courses are in the electives. And Marcy is wondering about uh, what the classroom experience is like. Is it uh, project-based, discussion-based, exam, uh, lecture exam-based? Um, so it would be great to hear from the three of you on your thoughts on this. I'll start, I guess. Um, I think that I found a pretty good combination, but in every class, we've had some group project that has involved being project-based. Every class I've taken, there's been at least one or two things that have been project-based. And some of them are like, right now I'm working on a project for a new restaurant opening that's an all semester, that's the project. There's a couple quizzes involved there, but it's mostly the project that's important. Um, so I, I think that's really important. I also think that um, there are classes that are more exam-based, but even probably my most exam-based class was uh, my financial management class that we just took. And I think Lucas was in that class with me and maybe Celine, but we, that was more based on that. But even in there, there was a project where we had to apply to real world. We had to go research a, a restaurant hospitality company and describe its finances and such. So um, I think that was really helpful to me. And uh, the core classes, just to be clear, if you decide to do a core, which some of us did and some of us didn't, you have to take four classes in that out of eight classes. So if it's innovation out entrepreneurship like I did, then I took four classes and then the others were all electives that I chose. If you decide not to, then there are some basic requirement classes you must take. Uh, and Elizabeth maybe will speak to that better than I. Um, 
and if you have a lot of experience, you actually can place out of some of those classes as well. I placed out of a couple because of my work experience. Yeah, so for our four core courses, uh, we have the financial class, financial management class. Uh, we have a leadership course. Um, we have a branding and marketing class. And then we have two um, other courses that, again, based on your experience in the industry, you may be placed in. So we have a hospitality operations class um, that's very foundational with a lot of site visit visits and then the innovation and disruption course for those who have had some experience in the field. So if you do decide to join the team in September, that's a conversation uh, we'll have um, in the months leading up to your first day of class. Uh, anything to add about um, cor courses or um, Lucas or Celine, if you took the hospitality operations class? I, I took the hospitality operations class because I also have a background in innovation. So it was either operations or innovation. Um, if you don't have hospitality experience, definitely the hospitality operations class will really help you to learn more about the inner parts of the industry, what it's like, how it moves as a, as a whole. Um, for the classes, you really have to put in the effort to be able to place in the class or do well. Um, it's a fast paced uh, program and you will learn a lot, but you also have to put in the work in order for you to, you know, achieve what you want to achieve and get where you want to be. Anything to add, Lucas? Uh, no, but I could um start with the next question um, regarding, sure. I'm sure you'd want to add to that one as well. Um, but I'd say probably 95%, and Elizabeth, again, if I'm wrong, please correct me. 95% um, of the people, I would say, like are full-time students. Um, and I'd say as far as age groups go, the bulk are probably between 23 and 27 around. And then you have a lot of people who have worked a little bit first and then have entered the program. So I'd say it is quite traditional for how most master's programs are. Uh, similar to an MBA or really most post postgraduate degrees. Yeah, def definitely on the money. So the majority of our students are in their mid to late 20s, but we do have a um, part-time student body with folks with 10, 15 plus years of work experience as well. Absolutely correct. Um, this is a great question. Uh, what would you say are the most important skills the program has taught you and how would you say they relate to the hospitality industry? Anyone like to, to tackle that, that big one? <laughs> Steve, Steve, you could. If you... Uh, well, I think for me, it's interesting because I came in with a lot of hospitality experience. So I felt like I had hospitality skills in terms of how to manage, how to, you know, how to talk to people, how to do a lot of the physical skills that are involved with things like the food and beverage management classes, like inventory and finance. But I think the biggest skills I learned were, were really about innovation and, and willingness to really look at everything. You're exposed to so many people um, beyond the actual classroom stuff. I, I'm also doing an awful lot of networking and I know Lucas hit on that, but the the networking options and the number of things you can do if you just go look at them are amazing. Um, you know, the speakers who come in as well, we didn't really talk about, but those people in addition to the professors are really unbelievable experts in the field and unbelievably available. Uh, I was in another panel with the uh, board of advisors for the hospitality group. And I think Celine was in that with me and we, and the entire board basically, I'd reach out to them on LinkedIn and they all were like, yep, happy to talk to you, happy to help. Let me know if you have questions. So I think that's been one of the skills I've really capitalized on is that ability to network and think about new things in addition to what I'm doing and how the industry is pivoting. Lucas or Celine? What was, what was the question again? Sorry. How about important skills you've learned in the in the program? Uh, not anything different than what Steve said. Um, okay. just your public speaking, um, your connections, really that's the main. I mean, obviously you'd gain 
marketing skills. You gain real, really anything you want from a business or hospitality perspective, but I'd probably put the most emphasis on your presenting skills, your public speaking and your collaboration skills, which employers really value from like the interviews I've been going on. They really place an emphasis on like working across teams and really having that um, experience. All right, we have a lot of great questions. So we'll move on to the next one. Um, so we have a question about choosing a concentration and if there's if you need to prepare for anything. Um, so uh, some of you, I've, I recognize some names have started an application or have been admitted to the program. Uh, congratulations. And some of you may have selected a concentration. So um, you're not um, committed to the concentration you select on your uh, applications, such as real estate management, um, real estate development. Uh, every fall, um, and, and the, you guys can speak to this uh, from your perspective, we have an electives fair where all the faculty uh, assemble and pitch their, uh, their concentrations and their elective courses um, to the MMH student body. Um, and I, I remember meeting with students afterwards and a lot of folks were like, oh, I was thinking about this concentration, but hearing about this class, I'm really excited about this. So you're not, you don't have to stay committed to a concentration. You could take a course in a little bit of everything. It's a great place to explore different interests and develop new skills. Um, I'm not sure if anyone wanted to, to add to that. I, I can add to that because I was the one who was doing a lot of meetings with Elizabeth because I decided to actually not get a concentration. Um, with my previous work experience, I've worked a lot in marketing, so I didn't need the marketing concentration because then I would just be repeating everything that I've already known and done in, in a certain way because even the core classes with the program actually already has a marketing and branding class. So what I did and with working with Elizabeth, what we did was we chose the electives that would very much help me uh, know more about the hospitality industry and have a grasp but like every 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 part of the industry that I could learn um, given one semester so what I did was I chose the rest two restaurant courses one in events which was very very helpful and two of the finance um, electives uh, that would also help like financial reporting and analysis. You would learn more, even if you have an accounting background, it would widen your uh, knowledge on how to actually account for the hospitality industry, which is very different when it comes to other certain types of businesses. Businesses. Excellent. All right, so next question is about building um, as an international student settling down in the US, um, and building a career. So that's what a lot of our students are focusing on now um, is securing that internship. Um, so I'm not sure if anyone wanted to talk a little bit about uh, career resources and their experience uh, with the internship search. Sure. Um, well, for the first question regarding settling down, um, the program does have a lot of international students as well. So they, there's definitely a sense of community and people who have similar backgrounds are often from similar countries as well. Um, but regarding internships, um, there is both a career center at the school that does send um, almost, I'd say weekly or bi-weekly opportunities, um, as well as um, resum resume checks, really anything you need to help you find the job. Um, you would have to do a lot of it on your own. Uh, but as I mentioned before, the connections are at your disposal. So you could ask any of your professors, do you know someone who works at Marriott? Do you know someone who works at Hilton? And then they also have company visits. I mean, and I think a career fair last semester as well. And was it this semester or last semester? So we had a virtual one in the spring and an in-person one in the fall. Right. So there's really a ton of options to help you secure an internship or if you're looking for a full-time job. Um, what I did was I interned during the fall and the spring. Uh, so then you're able to get full-time jobs come graduation, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too concerned. There's a lot of people at your disposal. Okay, and um, another question um, from Marcy, who was actually just accepted to the program yesterday. So congrats, Marcy. 
Um, she's asking um, about the sense of community in your classes. Do people make uh, friends, hang out outside of class? Um, she's moving from Texas and will definitely be seeking community. I can say from a, a slightly different perspective, I'm obviously not on campus or living on campus, but the people I've met have been great. And I made a ton of friends, you know, uh, inside class and, and beyond. So, um, you know, I, being here two years, I'm still in touch with the people here from last year that I was close with. Uh, and I see it being a smaller group, there's 50 or 60 students. And again, Elizabeth can correct me, but somewhere in there, you work with, you cross over with almost everybody, just about everybody in the class. I, I've known, I've had in the class, I've seen in the grad lounge, I've talked to. So I, I think there's a lot of opportunity to get to know people better. Yeah, and then also outside of the graduate program itself, you are on campus in a city that has six colleges surrounding you. Um, I've joined some of the clubs that you may think are, they have graduate student clubs. They have, I mean, depending on what your interests are, you could join intramural teams, just like undergrad. You could join any on-campus organizations. Um, there's also opportunities within uh, the School of Hospitality that you could do. Um, I did student government at the school. Um, so there's some, there's opportunities for master's pro, master's students to also, you know, you could be friends with seniors. You could, you know, like everyone's at your, at your, this like within reach, like at the school, you're not even just tied to the people right within your program. There's really people all over the place. Yeah. yeah. So we're, like Steve said, we're, uh, we're a tight knit community. We have um, over 60 students currently enrolled in the program. Um, and I, one thing from my perspective, I'm being new to the School of Hospitality, uh, there's, there's so many, there's so much outside the classroom activity. So beginning of the semester, um, the grad program went out to dinner with faculty at a, a local restaurant. Um, there, there's spring break trips where you can go to Paris or Panama or New York. Uh, I know Celine went to New York if you'd like to talk about that experience. Um, so there's a lot of organic opportunities or even just to hang out in the grad lounge. There always seems to be a, a group studying or, or having a, a nice time hanging out together. Uh, yeah, actually, there is a lot of opportunities. Um, recently, from class, um, there's like, you know, you get to know a lot of people and you form groups, small groups of friends. So for for me, actually, with two other three, two to three other classmates, we actually end up going out every week, at least once a week to try a new restaurant in Boston. So that because we all review restaurants. Um, and so that actually started like some sort of community with us. And then other classmates have heard about it and would want to join us from time to time. So that was nice. Um, I did participate in this year's spring break program between Panama, Paris, and New York. I chose New York. And also at the same, there were only seven uh, women that went into, into the spring break program. And it was such an experience because we all got to know each other we all got closer and we built like a small, again, community around that experience and even outside uh, the campus. If for me, the spring break program in New York was more about networking and seeing your opportunities outside of Boston in the hospitality industry and getting to tour every single aspect of it, um, like, a restaurant, an actual hotel. We toured, I think, the West End, and then we also met up with Union Square Hospitality Group to get to know more about their company um, and the other businesses that they have other than being a restaurant group. Um, I've heard from friends who've been to Paris that theirs were more of like a mixture of both a holiday and um, tours and get, getting to know more about uh, Paris and the same for Panama. Uh, it was definitely an experience for everyone. Thank you. Excellent. Um, so to conclude this this panel discussion, um, it would be great um, if the three of you could share what's next for you after graduation um, in uh, in May, and what would be your 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 advice to students who are considering uh, the MMH program. Uh, Steve, why don't we start with you? Uh, well, first, let me say, if um, any of you who are out there want 
information for me specifically and you want to contact me, I'm available. Just can probably contact me through Elizabeth. Uh, but I think um, I'm going forward to so the restaurants that I'm a partner in uh, probably have another one to five year shelf life with me as I am in my role. So I'm looking for all kinds of new, innovative, interesting things to work on uh, as we lead up to that. So this senior living project I was talking about is one. Uh, there's a lot of third party delivery stuff going on. There's a lot of other new things that are coming in to the area. Um, so I, I'm just trying to learn everything and I, I plan to continue working, you know, for a long time. So uh, that's what I'm looking at for next. And if I had advice for incoming students, it's just, you know, come in with a, a really open mind. And like any program, I think there's so much good foundation here, but you you have so many opportunities to make of it what you want. So if you if you use the networking that's available to you and, you know, become part of the community, it pays huge dividends and it also makes it a more fun experience while you're here. Hey, Lucas. Yeah, um, I'm still figuring out what I'm doing uh, after. I'd maybe know more in the next week or so, hopefully. Um, but yeah, just the program's only, you know, what, nine months, 10 months. So just make the most of it. Like Steve said, it is what you make of it talk to your professors, talk to, get involved as much as you can. There's a lot of opportunities within the program. If you're someone who's, you know, willing to, to be involved within the school, like you could help, you could be on planning committees. You could really do as much as you want within the school. Um, yeah, that's, and I put my email in the chat if, you know, anyone has questions as well. Thank you. And uh, Celine. Yeah, just like uh, what Steve and Lucas have said, you have you really have to make the most of your experience. And if you're the type of person who's a little bit shy, step outside the box because it's a one-time experience of being here in BU and doing the program. Um, as for me, after this, directly after this, I'm doing an internship. Um, but after that, I'm actually going back to uh manage a hospitality business back home in the philippines and i hope that everything that i learned i can apply um and it will be definitely something <laughs> you can also contact me through <laughs> if you have any questions i'll put my email in the chat all right well thank you all so much um so it's so important to hear what your experience uh, will look like so i hope chatting with Steve, Celine, and Lucas, you get a sense of what your year could look like um, if you join the Shaw community. And yes, any other questions, um, feel free to email uh, directly, um, or you can uh, send to me and I will uh, share them uh, with the team accordingly. Um, so thank you again, Steve, Celine, and Lucas. Um, we're going to uh, you're welcome to leave, but I'm going to uh, shift gears a little bit and talk about next steps for those of you um, considering uh, the program and joining us in the fall. All right. Um, so just a quick overview of uh, tuition. Uh, so these are the uh, new tuition rates uh, for the upcoming year. So for the MMH program, again, you're looking at 12 months of study. Uh, the total cost for full-time tuition is about 65,000. If you're considering our two-year Master of Science research degree, um, you're looking at about 89,000. Um, one of my favorite pieces of news to share with students is uh, everyone accepted to either program is uh, will receive a $10,000 scholarship. Additional funding may be awarded um, based on the merit of your, your application to the program. And uh, if you haven't already, I encourage you to start an application. Um, if you, for, as a thank you for attending, I will be sending you an application fee waiver uh, code to offset that $95 fee. So please uh, please consider applying and uh, sending me an email so I can get that off to you. Um, and this is uh, the requirements for your admissions portfolio. So we'll need to see your transcripts from your bachelor's degree and any graduate work you've completed previously, a copy of your resume or CV, two letters of recommendation, these can either be professional or academic. Um, if you're currently an undergrad, we do recommend at least one from a professor, but not required. It can be a supervisor from a work opportunity. 
Uh, we have an essay requirement of two to three pages talking about your background and career goals. A video essay, um, a unique component, but as you know, hospitality, it's all about connection and communication. So uh, this is a great way to speak directly to our admissions committee to tell them about yourself. Good news is we don't require the GRE or GMAT, so no need to sit for that exam. And if you are an international student, a language score may be required. Uh, feel free to uh, chat individually. Uh, we accept TOEFL, IELTS, or Duolingo here at Shaw. Uh, we do have some deadlines approaching. So if you are an international student, our final deadline is June 1st. Um, this is to ensure there's plenty of time to process uh, your international student documentation. And then for our domestic students, the final deadline is August 1st. Um, so again, we encourage you to apply. Uh, once we receive your application, you'll get um, a decision via email within two to three weeks. You won't be waiting too long to see if you'll be joining us in September. And next steps, again, um, reach out. We are happy to chat. So uh, please feel free to uh, call. Uh, you can find me on WhatsApp as well as WeChat. Um, my information is here on the slide. Um, and I'm happy to connect you with one of our student panelists today, a faculty member or another student uh, to talk individually about um, any questions you have. Um, and uh, please check us out on social media to see what all our graduate students are up to. Uh, but this is a fantastic program, a really special community, um, an opportunity to um, study uh, within a small community where uh, faculty are going to know you by name, are invested in what you're doing, uh, but you're going to have access to so many wonderful resources through the Boston University uh, community at large. Um, so thank you again uh, for joining us uh, here today. Um, and Dev Devnash, yes, the, uh, the application deadline is June, June 1st. Uh, so you have plenty of time to complete that uh, application. So thank you so much. And uh, we hope we'll see you at Shaw in September. Have a wonderful day. Take care.